Hey everybody and welcome back. So I'm making this video because of a couple of requests on YouTube and this is a difficult video to make because I'm sharing with you some of the tools I've created for myself in some of my experiences in building airframes, okay? This may not work for you and your mileage may vary, okay? But when we think of an, an airframe, um, no two airframes are really normally that close to the same but everybody wants to use the same principles or the same math or the same formulas to build an airplane. And I've learned over uh, 40 years of messing with model aircraft that if you've got enough wing, a big enough tail, a long enough nose to get the CG right, you've got enough power, your flying surfaces move, the plane will probably fly. I should add incidences in there too. As long as those things are there, it should fly. If you're trying to go really fast, lift a lot of weight, be really aerobatic. All of this kind of moves. It's very fluid the way you design an airframe. Um, adding systems to the airplane like flaps and spoilers and landing gear and all of that, it all matters. But I'm going to try to share with you in a very general sense how I do this. So essentially, if you look at some, now this is basic stuff you can find on the internet. You pick a wingspan. You've either done that to make it fit in your back seat or in your trailer or your trunk, whatever. Um, you've got a wing cord because it fits with the design of the airplane. You've got an airfoil so you can get the performance you want. Normally, the fuselage is 75% of the wingspan. The nose length is normally 20% of that fuselage length. The, the tail length is normally 40% from the trailing edge of the wing to the leading edge of the horizontal stabilizer. The horizontal stabilizer area is normally 25 to 30% of the wing, okay? And the vertical stabilizer is normally 35% of the horizontal stabilizer, okay? So, um, all that sounds pretty simple in general, but it doesn't necessarily apply to these two aircrafts. Sometimes you'll have a very long nose because you have your engines on the wing and you need longer nose to get the center of gravity right, i.e. a jetliner. The nose isn't just 20% of the fuselage on a jetliner, okay? So I'm just trying to make this super simple, everybody, okay? So here's a calculator, and I'm going to talk a lot more about this later on in the video, but I created this to be kind of a check set to make sure that all of my uh, areas are right. Now you'll notice on this that I've got one box that shows aileron size, elevator size, and rudder size. This is something I created and invented myself. Um, there's the aeronautical engineers can tell you all the stuff on Google of how to figure this out, but I wanted to create a super simple way. I love KISS. Keep it super simple that I could check my airframe designs and so far this has been spot on, but I'm going to get back to this in a minute. So uh, I want to do a shout out to my uh, sponsor, RTL Fasteners. Um, if you need anything to fasten your RC, helicopter, airplane, drone, anything together, as far as blind nuts, bolts, nuts, washers, all the weird sizes, um, they have it. So go to their website. If you order more than $50 a product and use code DA30, you can get 30% off your order. Okay. So when we start talking about... Um, you know, the basics of design. When I look at my aileron size, normally they are three to 10% of my wing area. Now that has to, a lot, a lot of that depends on how long my wingspan is. The longer the wingspan, actually the ailerons can be a little bit smaller because they've got more uh, moment arm. Um, smaller ailerons will require a smaller rudder because the bigger the aileron, the more adverse yaw is and the bigger the rudder you need. And actually I have a, a little formula I created for that. Uh, the elevators is 15 to 45% of the horizontal stabilizer area, okay? So that's kind of a given. given. When you think about the uh, rudder, and this is something I made up and it's worked perfect for me, is the rudder is 35 to 70% of the aileron area. That's both ailerons added up. Okay, and I'll show you in my little calculator how, how that works. But I also want to share with you a really simplistic way to do this. 
So we know if you've got a wing area, we know what your horizontal stabili stabilizer area should be, right? Just that rule of thumb. But something I want you to think about, when you look at this P40 from the top and from the side, I want you to look at the vertical stabilizer on the bottom and the one side of the vertical, horizontal, I'm sorry, one side of the horizontal stabilizer on the top drawing. They're almost the same square inches. So if you don't want to get into a whole bunch of math and stuff, figure out your wing area, figure out your horizontal stabilizer area, take one half of your stabilizer, make that your vertical stabilizer, and the plane will probably fly great. Honestly, it will. Well, and one thing I want you to understand, it's hard to build a bad flying airplane if the CG is right, the incidences are right, and, and these general areas uh, and dimensions are used. It's hard to make a bad flying airplane. Now, when we talk about this calculator I created, what's in the green squares are things I can adjust. So I put in, and basically I kind of cheat here, I put in my wingspan and I start adding my cord until I get to this wing area I know because off my CAD drawing, I've already measured what my wing area is gonna be. So I put in the wing length and then I start adjusting the cord until I see the exact wing area I have. And then I go to the H-stab area and do I say I want 30% size stab? Do I want a 35% stab? Do I want a 25% stab? Same thing with the vertical stabilizer. Do I want a 35 to 40? I pick 35. All of a sudden, it populates a lot of these other numbers. Then I go to my aileron size. How, how much percentage do I want my ailerons um, to be of the wing area? How much percentage do I want the elevator to be of the horizontal sta stabilizer area. And then I say, how big, do, how much of the rudder percentage do I want of the aileron area? And then I put in my weight and all of this has worked perfect on uh, five or six of the airframes I've designed now. And one I designed for a PAL. So um, actually two or three I've designed for PALs. So this has just worked really, really well for me. When we look at this P40 that I'm helping a PAL with right now, it's got a 110 inch wing. Uh, 1,430 square inches-ish because it's being modified a little bit. I don't want to give away too much. But we came up with all of this. But if you look, his cube loading is a little bit high. I'm going to try to get him to build the airplane lighter. But in a general sense, this is the size what all the areas would be. Okay? So all I'm trying to do in this video is explain that um, you literally can take foam nowadays um, and cut it out to the right square inches, hot glue it to a broomstick, put an electric motor on the front of it, make sure your vertical stabilizer big enough, put some micro servos on it and fly it. So don't be afraid of building an airframe. You really have to, and I do, I, I, I joke that the airframe is gonna commit suicide. It, it means it's, it's, it's impossible to fly. You, you take off and it just goes crazy and crashes and you're always like, well, it wasn't me. And I joke that that's the plane trying to kill itself. The thing is, is that it's really hard to build an airframe that doesn't want to fly right if the CG's right, the wing and horizontal and vertical stabilizer areas are right, it's got enough power, and you got the throws right. It's, it's hard to build an airplane that flies like crap. So don't be scared. I, I, I've, I've had a lot of emails saying, look, I want to design this airplane, but I need to know all the math to get it just right. I don't know what just right means. I honestly don't. Um, my, if you've ever seen my planes fly, they fly beautiful. And it's taken a lot of years to figure that out. Now, did I ever build airplanes that flew bad? I wouldn't say any ever flew bad. Some of them didn't have enough control response or they were lead sleds or... Um, I'm trying to think. I've never built an airplane that was just horrible to fly, okay? Because we know enough about wing area, horizontal stabilizer area, vertical stabil stabilizer area, and how many watts a pound we need. You know, you could take a shoebox and put uh, little foam wings and a tail on it and put a motor on it, and you could fly a shoebox or a brick. So I hope you enjoy my videos, everybody. I hope this made sense. I'm trying to make this as simplistic as possible. Okay, there's a lot of people who want to get out there and talk rocket science. I want to help everybody who wants to buy some balsa wood and glue and a motor and some servos and build their own airplane. 
okay? So if you ever got any questions, reach out to me. I'm always here and love to help people. Like and comment and subscribe. And in the comments, tell me what other videos you want. Because a lot of you are telling me the videos you want, and a lot of them I've never thought of doing. And they're easy to do. So rock on, be safe, and everybody have an awesome day. Bye-bye.